In this video, we'll discover how to get the rock shoulder. Some even call it the diamond delts and even the boulders. Whatever you call it, round, rock solid, and striated shoulders are highly sought after by anyone who's into fitness. So how do you get the rock shoulder? Essentially, there are three angles you need to tackle that have round, solid deltoids or delts, which are front delts, middle delts, and rear delts. Here are my simplified and complete workouts to fully engage every angle of your delts to make them pop. 1. Lateral shoulder raise. 2. Standing side deltoid circle raise. 3. Seated overhead military press. 4. Seated alternated dumbbell press. 5. Upright rowing. 6. Seat bent over rear deltoid raise. Number 1. Lateral shoulder raise, the best lateral deltoid exercise in history. This is the best exercise to sculpt round shoulders and give others the impression of you having huge and wide shoulders. 1. Position the height of the seat so that the feet are firmly planted on the floor. This gives resistance against the floor and assists in balance and stability while lifting. The seat should be adjusted to a comfortable position to perform the movement. 2. This depends on the type of equipment you use, whether it's dumbbells or a lateral raise machine, you either place the forearms against the pads or grip the handles. Start with your arms at your sides. 3. If you're using a machine, raise the arms up while pushing against the forearm pads. If you're using dumbbells, simply raise those dumbbells laterally. 4. Raise the weight until the forearms are parallel to the floor or even with the top of the shoulders. Inhale while raising the weight, and exhale while lowering the weight. 5. Raise the weight with a count of 2, and lower the weight with a count of 4. Try doing at least 12 to 15 reps for each set of this workout for best results. Number 2. Standing Side Deltoid Circle Raise, one of the best exercises for overall shoulder muscle development in all different angles. 1. Pick up the weights with your palms facing each other. Try to use your legs to lift the weight rather than your back. Keep the back straight and the head up. 2. Stand up straight with your feet positioned in a comfortable stance so you're well balanced and relaxed. The feet should be about shoulder width apart. The arms should be fully extended at your sides with a dumbbell in each hand. 3. Begin with the arms hanging in the starting position. Raise the dumbbells simultaneously out to the sides, bringing them up just above shoulder height as seen in the photo. It's acceptable to flex the elbows slightly as the weights are brought up. Inhale when raising the weights, and exhale when lowering the weights. 4. Lower the weights using the same lateral motion with which they were raised. Usually, you can't go heavy on this exercise, so take a light weight and perform 8-10 to 10 circles for each set of this exercise. Number 3. Seated Overhead Military Press, a power movement to develop the mid-deltoids. 1. Sit on the stool and position yourself in the middle of the bars. Grab the bars with your hands evenly spaced outside the shoulders. 2. Start with your biceps touching your forearms and push upward from the shoulder level until the arms are fully extended overhead. 3. Keep your back straight and your head up as you lift. 4. Lower the weights slowly with a count of 4. Lower the hands so they're below your ears. You may need to adjust the seat so that you can get a full range of motion going up and down. 5. Inhale as you raise the weights and exhale as you lower them. Number 4. Seated Alternated Dumbbell Press. Another variation of military press with more control and isolation. 1. Lift two dumbbells in a continuous motion, keeping the back straight and the head up until they're at shoulder height. 2. Position the feet firmly on the floor and push against the floor for stability. Notice that the heel of the prosthetic leg is pushing against the floor. 3. Keep the elbows out to the sides and the thumbs facing each other. 4. Lift to mid-chest level. Number 5. Upright rowing, a killer workout for the middle deltoids. 1. Bend over from the knees and waist to roll the bar on the floor as close to the feet as possible. Grip the bar with your palms facing you. 2. Pick up the bar and raise yourself to a standing position, using the legs more than the back to pull yourself and the weight up. 3. Stand with your feet about shoulder width apart and your arms extended in front of you, as shown in the top photo. 4. 
Keep the dumbbell close to your body as you pull it straight up to chin height or as close as you're able to raise it. Keep standing straight. 5. At the top position, the elbows should be out to the sides and almost as high as the ears. 6. Pause momentarily at the top position before lowering the weight back down so the arms are extended. 7. Inhale while lifting the weight and exhale while lowering the weight. Number 6. Seat bent over rear deltoid raise. This workout targets the rear delts, a part where most people neglect, but they're essential to bring out the round boulders. Here's how you do it. 1. Select two lightweight dumbbells, 10 pounds or less for the beginner. Place them on the floor on either side of the end of a flat bench. 2. Sit at the end of the bench with your feet fairly close together and planted firmly on the floor. The dumbbell should be on either side below where you're sitting. 3. Lean forward so that your chest almost touches your thighs. Keep your head facing the floor. Lift the dumbbells to the height of your ears. 4. Raise the dumbbells out and upward, straightening your arms and locking the elbows. 5. Lower and raise the dumbbells in a continuous semicircular motion, keeping your arms straight and elbows locked. 6. Inhale as the dumbbells are raised, exhale as they are lowered. You don't have to go heavy on this one as the rear delts aren't huge muscles. Try doing it for 12 to 15 reps each set with control for best results. Now, this is what most of the ladies and gentlemen are waiting for. The secrets to build washboard abs. But first, let me ask you a couple questions. Are you slumping in the couch right now? With your tummy bulging from beneath your shirt? Fatty, one-pack, beer belly, are you sick and tired of these words? Or have you been suffering from being overly skinny and bony that it makes you feel small, weak, and vulnerable? If your answer is yes, it's time to get abs. Abs are great, but don't get too obsessed with it. Oftentimes, abs are actually a byproduct from your commitment to your workout routines. So, what exactly are abs? Abs is a short term for abdominal, which is your stomach muscles. A well-developed rectus abdomis, or six-pack abs, seems to be the end goal of any exercise regimen. It is this muscle group that is one of the most challenging to build, as tons of effort and brutally intense workouts don't magically guarantee a completely successful outcome. But if you aim for overall well-being first and six-pack abs second, you're more likely to keep up the vigorous training needed to get that enviable, perfect physique. Here are the three secrets to building your very own washboard abs. Number one, burn your fats. Number two, tone your abs. And number three, eat smart and drink plenty of water. Number one, burn your fats. Everyone has abs, but they're often not visible because most people have a thick layer of fat hovering on top of their abs. So the first secret is a no-brainer, actually. Simply torch your fats to let those abs pop. Burn body fat with regular aerobic activity. You can't spot reduce abdominal fat. You need to burn your overall body fat before your body allows you to start building a specific muscle group. Cycling, jogging, running, jumping rope, and swimming are some good aerobic exercises to achieve this. You must perform at least 30 minutes of heart rate elevating exercises to enable your body to begin burning your stored fat. This is because your body only burns energy from food during the first 20 minutes. The ideal calculation is 30 minutes at least four times a week, best before breakfast as it triggers your body to burn your previously stored fats. Your abs will usually pop at around 6 to 8 percent body fat percentage. Even if you got low body fat percentage, you're still not guaranteed to have clear cut abs. Just like any other muscle, you need to train your abs to grow. The best exercises to tone your abs are with crunches. There are three types of crunches to target specific regions of your abdominal area to achieve evenly sculpted washboard abs. Regular crunches, reverse crunches, and bicycle crunches. The first is the regular crunches. This exercise tones the upper abs. Here's how you perform regular crunches. Do a crunch by lying on the floor with your knees bent and feet flat on the ground. Put your hand behind your head or in front of your chest. Use your abdominal muscles to lift your upper body off the ground until your abs are fully contracted. Your feet should remain on the ground and only your shoulders are needed to support your upper body upwards. Reverse crunches focus on the lower abs and they're considered to be a more advanced movement. When performing this exercise, always be in control and feel your muscle contractions instead of swinging your legs around with momentum. Here's how you perform proper reverse crunches. Lie on the floor with your legs up in the air. You can put down your hands, palms down, on the ground next to your hips for balance. 
Use your abdominal muscles to lift your pelvis off the ground and your legs into the air. Repeat several times. Bicycle crunches, a killer workout that engages your entire abdomen. Keep your legs in the air, knees bent so that your calves are perpendicular to the ground. Put your hands behind your head with your elbows extended on either side of your head. Squeeze your abdominal muscles to draw your right knee towards your left elbow while stretching the left leg as if you're pedaling a bike. Do the same with the left knee right elbow contact. Repeat this motion several times. Bear in mind that it is essential that you increase the difficulty of your exercises and change the variety of your workout routines every two months. This is to allow your muscles to recuperate and burn calories efficiently. Do these routines at least three times a week. These three exercises are the basics of abdominal workouts. After mastering these three workouts, you can move on to more advanced workouts such as hanging leg raises, dragonfly, and Swiss ball weighted crunches. Did you know that abs are actually made in the kitchen? Truth is, abs are about 80% diet and 20% workout. That's why you should pay lots of attention to your diet when you're aiming for abs. First, you need to eat smart. Avoid processed food at all meals if you can. Foods that have undergone preservation or packing have lost their nutrients. And worse, processing adds on unhealthy fats, plenty of sugar or sugar substitute, and synthetic vitamins and minerals. Most of the ingredients in processed foods include sweeteners, coloring, and hydrogenated oils. These ingredients aren't even recognized by your body as edible ingredients, so they end up being stored as fats. Fats have a bad reputation, but not all fats are harmful. Dietary fats coming from monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats are good for you. Olive oils, fish oils, natural peanut butter, avocado, and almonds are some really good examples. Just make sure to keep your intake between 20 and 30% to regulate your calories. This will help stabilize your insulin level, which, if too high, causes fat retention. By eating healthy fats, you're more likely to stay away from the fridge looking for food as these healthy fats tend to keep you sated for a longer time. Most often, eating only protein or carbs alone will make you hungry more often. Also, remember to drink plenty of water. Studies have shown that people who drink a lot of water lose more weight and are able to keep it off longer. Adequate water intake boosts your metabolism rate. Drinking more water also helps you stay away from empty calorie drinks like soda and processed juice. Not all carbs are bad. Good carbs like whole grains are rich in fiber and go through your system much slower than refined white carbs. Instead of your normal to-go carbs, always opt for healthy carbs. Brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat, and oats. Load up on protein early in the morning. People who get 35 grams of protein at breakfast tend to be less hungry throughout the day. Your body will also benefit from changes in hormones and brain signals that control appetite. A protein-packed breakfast is closely related to increased feelings of fullness and a reduced desire to snack. For example, instead of the usual ham and eggs, maybe you can go for Greek yogurt, egg whites, and Canadian bacon. Eat less, but often. Rather than eating three big meals a day, you can eat five meals per day, but each with a smaller portion. When your body's hungry, it likes to hoard fat, causing you to crave food like pizzas, burgers, and pastries. If you're rarely hungry, your metabolism learns to stabilize and you won't feel food cravings. If you'd like to try a stricter diet to keep your blood sugar level balanced throughout the day, eat four to five proper meals in bite-sized portions. You tend to not overeat this way because you'll be consuming foods high in fiber, protein, and nutrients. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.